Our first invited lecture will be by Dr. Sudesh N. George, who will speak on robust PCA and its application in medical image analysis. Dr. Sudesh N. George is currently providing service as an associate professor at the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, National Institute of Technology, Delhi. His domain of interest include machine learning, image processing, computer vision, and deep learning. He has authored and co-authored multiple peer-reviewed scientific papers and presented works at national and international conferences, including ITP Transaction on Signal Processing and International Conference of Computer Vision. I would now like to invite Dr. Sudesh and George to the dais for the lecture of Robert's PSC and its application in medical image analysis. Welcome, Mr. So good afternoon. But after all, uh, means that Mr. Kona Yapoji is for changing the topic because uh, Australia Robustrate is not uh, an application of Robustrate BCA in uh, medical imaging. I am going to take the topic on computer vision and property surgery because I was uh, not confident to uh, take a topic in computer vision and property surgery previously because that, I was afraid that I did not give enough time to prepare it. That. That's why I have given an order topic. Uh, Maybe it's in this session, but I'm going to deliver this. I'm not going to talk more and more about the theoretical aspects of uh, this uh, communication and robotic surgery. My aim is to introduce part of the different areas in uh, robotic surgery where computer vision can be implemented or we can incorporate. So that, you know, for a beginner point of view, those who are pursuing research in the area of uh, robotic surgery, especially in its processing, I will try to mark some, uh, you know, let's say, objectives so that if you are interested you can further pursue and uh, this is a topic uh, which is given to one of my research scholar who joined two months back in our institute and so we also started to work in that one so I don't know how much very uh, in depth knowledge about that one we have done some literature review part and uh, then the one I found it is you know that computer vision in property surgery is an emerging area and it's not very saturated, so we will have enough, you know, uh, scope for improvement, so that you know we can easily publish the materials, whatever our contributions are. Now. So let me start. Uh, so I mean, it's where the significance of robotic surgery is coming into picture. That's where we love it, you know. Uh, every year, this this is actually a uh, start is given by the. Lancet Commission on Robot Surgery, uh, there are around uh, 143 million additional surgery procedures submitted each year to save life and prevent disability. So, you know that uh, in most of the Western countries, the concept of robotic surgery is very dominant. They are practicing it. You know, the importance is nothing but, you know, much precision and accuracy is very much required because we are dealing with the lives of human beings. Definitely, the precision and uh, accuracy is the most important thing. Then, as well as the speed of operation should be optimized. Uh, basically, you know that uh, taking good decisions and everything that is also important. Thing, right? What I am going to do is I am going to introduce uh, different areas in robotic surgery where computer vision can be exactly useful. So that's my fundamental aim. I am not sure whether it may be really perfect. Uh, solution, but I will try my level best to uh, give a summary of the presentation and it's the topic. Yeah, so the improvements in perioperative care that means you know that at the time of the very near to the time of operating, uh, operation or surgery and, and the introduction of minimally invasive approaches have made the surgery more effective, you know, basically keep out surgeries and everything is very dominant right now. Because the effect of the wound, everything is, can be reduced, right? There is significance of this robotic surgery is coming into picture. And in that situation, then we are using, you know, a fiber optic cameras, right? These fiber optic cameras, that uh, one uh, figure is given there, it is inserted, and uh, from that we can visualize the thing. Uh, can anybody, anybody suggest what is computer vision? Any uh, comments from your side? Computer vision, what is the computer vision? Computer vision is nothing but based on the image or the means uh, image uh, the system is going to take some interpretation. System is going to find out the story behind the image. That's the basic concept, right? Actually, we are seeing what image means we are taking some uh, uh, interpretations or you know that some we are 
uh, making some storage in that, right? Same concept, you know that the uh, system is going to come to the the model is going to take some decisions on the image, right? In this case, you know that medical images are coming into picture, not like the previous picture, but in the source of the image, so it's not like that. Other, you know, fiber optic cameras, and based on that, we are getting images basically in the form of video sequences, frames, and all, right? And uh, this should be properly interpreted correctly, right? Otherwise, what is going to happen is any, uh, you know, that uh, misinterpretation is creating a lot of issues, right? As I told earlier, this is, we are dealing with the lives of human beings, definitely, we need to take much care, right? So, uh, while these fiber optic cameras are important, they are, you know, it captures visual data of the surgical site and uses it to guide the movement of the surgical tools, right? You know, the robot is going to do a surgery, right? Or a partial part, yeah, which is done by the robots, right? And you know, in that situation, uh, as a beginner point of view, I was also feeling like this somewhat, you know, uh, fearing thing, right? You know, we can't really you know, expect that a uh, doctor is not there or uh, he's remotely sitting and a robot is going to the surgery, which is somewhat, you know, uh, imagination point of view, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, somewhat confusing for us, right? Patient may not get much faith on the uh, procedure as well, right? But it's working very well, that's our advantage. So, how it is happening it is, you know, the major part of this robotic surgery is nothing but computer vision and its applications. They are means the by using these fiber optic cameras, uh, we are getting, uh, you know, uh, sequences of images and uh, that image is actually analyzed. So that we may, I means the system automatically, automatically should take some decisions and what kind of surgery and the, even you know that robot surgery means definitely there will be instruments or tools, right? And these tools also should be properly selected. It should be recognized. They are the, you know that uh, object detection, similar kind of thing are coming there. And in addition to that automation, something to be automated. So similar kind of thing I am going to explain here. It's a very short discussion about this all. And uh, this technology has the potential to improve patient, patient outcomes. You know that the perfect uh, surgery is good, very good in nature, definitely the outcome of the surgery will be uh, fascinating, right? And similarly, so there is surgical complications, right? If you are going to use the concept of minimal inversion surgery, in that situation, you know, the cost the complication may be very less. If you are going to perform chemo surgery or similar kind of thing, on that day itself, we may get this out of the hospital. So that provision you know, otherwise you know that it's an you know, open surgery, it will be very uh, complicated in nature, right? And uh, in most of the situation, that is robotic surgery, uh, which is providing maximum accuracy, so that you know that the efficiency of the uh, procedure may be improved. So these robotics are the main aim of this kind of surgery. And uh, these are the potential areas where uh, uh, this computer vision and robotic surgery can be applied. Uh, first one is tissue identification. I will explain one by one in the coming slides anyway. First one is tissue identification. Second one is uh, surgical navigation, then augmented reality, uh, telesurgery, robotic deep food sensing, automated surgery, quality analysis of uh, surgical procedures, training and education, medical diagnostic. Operating complexity analysis, intraoperative decision support, operating uh, room team dynamics. I will explain each and every points in the coming slides. Anyway, from the title itself, uh, you may be getting some level of understanding, right? So, uh, first one is the tissue identification. You know that by using the fiber optic camera, we are getting some visual information. Uh, the interior part of our body part of where, wherever we are going to do the surgery. In that case, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, uh, first task is to this. Uh, it's passing between the healthy tissue as well as the unhealthy tissue, right? Basically, tumor or similar kind of thing, right? That classification, you know, based on the visual inspection itself, so that uh, healthy tissues will not be affected. You know, that that minimally, you know. So that's the concept coming there. So the concept of tissue identification is distinguished between different types of tissue which can help surgeons to avoid damaging health tissue during the surgery, right? So that's the first uh, thing where we can, you know, there are a lot of challenges of participating in each of these cases. Uh, these all are very, you know, uh, very, means uh, uh, 
size of the images, everything is very complicated in nature and the organs, the size of the organ, everything is very small. As well as occlusion, occlusion is also a serious problem. Occlusion is a, some portion may be hidden, completely not visible even if you are going to capture the images. In that situation also, we need to take a decision. Even if this area is introduced, there will be each area there will be a lot of hardness. So that also we need to consider, right? So as I told you, it's a very uh, critical thing. Position is very important. And second one is surgical navigation. Uh, this is very interesting in 3D uh, representation, the generation of 3D uh, generation. Uh, you can see this is actually an illustration where uh, you know uh, we said that this is doing some surgery. There, uh, she can view the uh, 3D representation so that internal parts, uh, 3D representation, 3D generation, reconstruction, everything is an robotic area. It's so not only in robotic surgery, many other areas also. A uh, lot of uh, advanced deep learning models are available right now. Um, so we are also doing some work, work in, exactly in, the, in the area of 3D face uh, reconstruction and similar kind of work. So what is happening it is create a 3D model of surgical site which can then be used to guide the movement of surgical robots. Right? A precise movement is possible as well as the surgeon can monitor that thing also. Right? How it is moving and uh, generally you know that uh, some uh, uh, 2D images would be are getting. From that you are getting, you are going to uh, reconstruct the 3D, uh, 3D versions. So that 3D means, you know, we are actually seeing everything 3D representation, right? Depth information also we are getting. Otherwise, you know, if you want to consider two, two dimensional images only the RX and Y coordinates are coming there, we are not getting any, any, any depth information. If we are getting that depth information also, uh, the analysis will be more perfect. That's the fundamental idea for the uh, three, uh, reconstruction of the integration of the 3D model so that the clarity of the data or visualization with the improvement in visualization is a can be possible, right? So next application is the food sensing, you know, robot is going to do the survey, right? That uh, it should, ex I mean, uh, apply, you know, what, you know, adequate uh, amount of force to the, for the survey operation, right? If it is going to work, what is going to happen, at least, you know, that uh, how it's going to like, happen, right? Sometimes, you know, other kind of, you know, basically, health issues also may be affected. So that force measurement and everything of force sensing can be visually we can uh, analyze by using um, the concept of uh, by using the different concept of computer vision, right? So measure the force exerted by the surgical robot uh, on the surrounding tissue, which can help surgeons to avoid harming it. That's the fundamental idea. So here also a lot of surgeons are there. In this area, a lot of surgeons are there. We need to address why we are designing proper model for this or okay. And uh, next one is uh, robotic assisted telesurgery. You know, uh, telesurgery means you know uh, the, uh, to perform surgery remotely. Right? Uh, the surgeon is sitting somewhere else, and uh, he's monitoring everything. So tele uh, surgery is going to happen there. Provide the surgeon with a high resolution, low latency video feed of the surgical side, enabling them to perform surgery remotely. So there are few terms are coming high resolution. Right? Resolution then previous lecture so I was explaining the concept of resolution, spatial resolution, temporal resolution, everything, right? And uh, you know, if the spatial resolution is high in the sense, the data will be more clear, yeah. so that uh, it can be uh, means uh, uh, it can provide more accurate result. But the problem with the this uh, tell is something is uh, you know that we are going to transmit the data wireless or wireless medium. Then we are transmitting the data. In that situation, you know, compression, uh, again, the uh, influence of noise, everything is coming into the picture, right? And the, so this sort all of, uh, uh, compressing in the sense the resolution is you know, always going to be getting reduced. And, uh, you know, other kind of noise influences also may be coming. In that situation, that kind of pre processing is also required at that receiver, right? So, one more thing is all of the is that we are going to consider. Uh, this uh, transmission, reception, analysis, everything is coming as real time process, right? Real time in the sense, uh, we need to take quick decisions. The processing should, time should be reduced. That means when we are designing some models, or uh, we are going to, you know, uh, it's, uh, uh, this whole stuff, we 
Because in that in the case of tele medicine or telesurgery, especially in the case of telesurgery, lot of you know stages of coming: transmission, reception, as well as the acquisition, uh, the final stage of the re uh, reconstruction. So another kind of processing, everything is coming there, right? It should be us means the speed of population should be the, should be maximized. Otherwise, you know that this is a real time process. Surgery is going on there, and it should not take much time, right? That also that means while we are performing or designing some algorithm, it should work fast with maximum level of echoes performance, right? Uh, another uh, already saw proved something in the last slide, the previous presentation, uh, the concept of virtual reality, augmented reality, similar kind of thing, right? And uh, augmented reality means annotations and everything you are getting. Deep learning is a lot of deep learning, you know, that for the last 10 years, uh, for the last one decade, you know, a lot of improvement uh, is happening in the field of deep learning, right? Now we are the law of third generation deep learning models, so it can avoid uh, very good accuracy with the less complexity that the speed of operation can be improved. In that situation, you know that augmented reality means a lot of deep learning models for augmented reality was already developed, still it is going on, further improvements are there. Um, so, you know, it is used to provide a color coded overlay of the surgical video. Uh, some example is illustrated in the slide itself that can ultimately serve as a navigation assistant for the service, navigation purpose also we can use this case, right? So something is written there in the fixed text itself, so we can, it will be able to understand the things. Then quality control. So, you know, there are two cases are coming. First point is my first bullet point, please have a look at that one. Automatically access the quality of surgery, for example, by measuring the alignment of incisions, movement, velocity, etc. So that quality, how it is going on, that concept also we can measure. So uh, please note that these all are based on the visual information. I mean, it's like a camera, from that we are getting some visual information. And that initial information is only put there, and based on that one, we are going to, going to take some decision for different different applications, right? And uh, then video based process, the VBA is being, uh, is being increasingly investigated for operative performance assessment, uh, uh, means uh, formative feedback and subject to prevention. Sometimes you know that uh, after that also, how that purpose is happening, means the, how the subject procedure is well established, such type of things we can analyze. Then, as I said earlier, next application is coming in the field of automation. And, uh, you know, uh, most of the surgeries are performed by uh, surgeons using tiny camera and other surgical instruments. By using CV techniques, this can be easily automated. That's the thing which is happening right now, especially not in in the mainly in Western countries, not uh, exactly in India anyway. Uh, we are not in a position to do such kind of things anymore. Uh, we are doing, but not in the very last scale. And also, surgical media analysis allows us to monitor cases in real time. Then, please note that the predict combinations and intervene to improve care and prevent adverse events. So, real time process point of view, some abnormalities have to be detected. The model should be recognized. You know that it may give you a feedback, and uh, so suggest the proper things and all these things, and uh, so such type of trained model should be installed in that case, right? So that is another application area. Yeah, then the training and education that is also very significant here. It's uh, uh, you know generally uh, you know the surgeons they are experienced the surgeons may be there at the same time the trainers may be there, right? To train the surgeons, that means learning surgeons, that means you know that they have I mean, people. Uh, we can, uh, as Sir uh, told in the previous lecture, you know that uh, means uh, uh, virtual reality simulations will be very much useful, right? So, for this virtual reality simulation generations, uh, means uh, modern generation and everything, uh, the corresponding data from the previous uh, surgery that are required, so the data based creation and based on that not only the trained model is to be developed. So, uh, which is mentioned here, create virtual reality simulations of surgeries, which can help, which can be used to train surgeons and medical students in the same 
uncontrolled environment. So medical, definitely, you know, uh, we, we need to take uh, extra care. It should not harm to any person. So if the uh, 3D visualization, augmented reality, such type of concepts are coming there, definitely the students can learn in an easier manner. They can understand in a uh, means in a beautiful manner. That's the fundamental concept coming there. That's why this concept is very much useful in the case of training and education. That is also an integral part. Then the surgical diagnosis, again another field. Uh, so uh, whether the surgical procedure is necessary and what specific procedure may be required. Uh, such type of systems are also available, models are all available. Uh, means uh, it can uh, give some uh, means feedback. So that means based on whether it is recovered as a surgery is recovered as a, it's a, a, a must be or it means uh, which kind of procedure can be followed such suggestions can also be given by such type of models also so that's another application idea uh, then the operative complexity analysis you know uh, in the different you know, uh, means models for procedure and surgical phase recognition can be used to automatically generate structured and segmented databases to assist with quality improvement initiatives. So, in the previous lectures I was telling that the database availability, you know, medical field uh, in our uh, means research also, we are also facing a lot of issues because availability of database and we need to get expert opinion. And uh, some uh, one girl is asking about the database, and also you know that uh, doctors are very busy, especially in Kerala, India. If you are going to consider a situation, you know that uh, to to meet a doctor is very difficult because they are too much busy with uh, uh, means patients, and uh, we will not get enough time to. They cannot spend uh, time on on that. Right? So in that situation, you know, uh, means getting the database and uh, getting clear opinion from the doctor say medical practitioners so it's very difficult so uh, that's a, uh, that's why the database creation is very other thing thing is ethical issues uh, avoid some compulsory and also you know the privacy issues everything is coming into picture so in that situation uh, doing some research work in the field of medical imaging is somewhat a difficult job uh, uh, if, and uh, while we are submitting the research publications without the uh, means feedback from the medical practitioner, the only paper is getting rejected. Uh, so that problem also we are facing. So that's why uh, if we have proper collaborations and all, definitely uh, that will be good. That as uh, suggested in the previous previous lecture, right? Yes. Yeah, so we uh, see here the database, the house from the database. Definitely the trained model will give good, good uh, results also, right? That's uh, another thing. Anyway, and the uh, current scenario, different training models are available, either in unsupervised training or self-supervised training type, different, different types of uh, techniques are also available. They are also been established. Uh, so if the, uh, the database size is not very large in nature, we may be able to get uh, some decent level of uh, uh, means accuracy that makes good model we can develop. Then uh, decision support, that is also a very important thing. Uh, so real-time predictions from CV models, right? That can be used to guide trainings and enhance survey performance. So prediction, so with respect to the real-time situation, uh, the model may give some feedback so that uh, means the uh, means uh, it may help the trainings as well as service in a particular span. And uh, so sometimes you know that some models are also available. CV models can automatically access as, uh, assess the appearance of the tumor and suggest whether that case is more appropriate for a training or an experience of surgery also. Sometimes you know that the complexity of the situation may be very not very significant. In that situation a training can handle that. Such, co such complexity analysis also, uh, this trade model can do so that uh, at least uh, the uh, experiments so can serve, give some suggestions so that uh, means some decision can be taken by the medical. Then uh, another uh, application where the computer is performing well is operating through team dynamics, workflow analysis. There, what is meaning is workflow analysis. Which is used to improve communication, situation awareness, and readiness of the whole surgical team. 
So that is also uh, we have this uh, trait model for that. Then the Valpo analysis also helps to detect deviation from an expected intraoperative reports and trigger an automated request for backup or second opinion. Right? If something happening, some you know problem uh, things are happening, then uh, some deviation can be suggested by not human being the trait model. So that is also the thing, right? And for all these cases, we need good head database and uh, a good trait model, then that thing will be. Now my question, what means this uh, uh, means uh, computer vision is attracted in robotic surgery first one is uh, the main model is the precision and accuracy. Uh, as you know that uh, it can provide it. a good train model is available and everything is you know that uh, uh, precision as well as accuracy is very good in nature. So I uh, mean that uh, this is, uh, as I said earlier, we are dealing with the types of human beings. Definitely, the precision and accuracy are to be maximized. Otherwise, it may give very bad effects also. So, but uh, this, uh, even uh, in many cases, for what is we can provide much better higher accuracy so that uh, it can be useful. Right? Second one is remote surgical procedures. Why it is making more attractive? Second one is remote surgical procedures. Right? Higher qualified surgeons can operate on patients with more or more areas using the uh, robotic systems. Uh, once the system is installed, if the surgeon is not available in that place itself, the more he can handle. So, using the concept of virtual reality or reality concept, he can monitor everything and uh, that operation, right? So, uh, the remote areas and everything, this will be very useful. And uh, to also reducing the number of uh, T, otherwise if you are looking at the uh, surgical team, there will be a lot of persons, right? And once installation cost is very high, but once it is installed, everything is getting automated, the cost can be also reduced. The number of people can be reduced in the surgical team, everything is possible, right? So these are all the attractive factors coming in the case of robotic surgery. And uh, robotic surgery is completely related on computer vision aspects. Then training and education, right? This is also very important thing, uh, especially this kind of things where it is applicable at the time of pandemic, because uh, all of us are stuck means in our home, right? In online education was happening. Uh, still, it is useful, you know, that uh, communication technologies can be used to provide training and education for healthcare professionals in low income countries, remote areas, everywhere. So it's also possible. So three D visualization. Augmented reality, virtual reality concept, everything, you know, that people may get some feel about the thing and they will get, you know, that even uh, uh, means, it, uh, means remote area also it's possible now. Internet connection, everything is available in uh, even very remote areas also. So that's that's why this is training and education is also coming into this. Then the cost effective, and I already told you that, you know, once the installation cost is as but once it is installed, you know, the uh, cost can be released because uh, you know everything is automated and the uh, uh, quality of manpower is very less, right? So uh, that's the, that's another attractive fact. Now, a brief introduction about what are the different kinds of techniques which we are generally adopting to implement or to develop the CV models in robotic surgery. Uh, you know, generally we are current system point of view, we are generally follow the third generation neural network. Starting with the convolution neural network, that's second generation model and its extended versions. Uh, then, uh, you know, uh, that means a linear based on classification models. And even I can tell you that, you know, that the instrument selection is also there. Robotic surgery means the robot should select the appropriate uh, tools and instruments, right? There the object detection is coming. Number of means the devices and equipments are keeping the media keeping there, and the robot should select properly the imaging system. It is uh, properly selecting the tools and doing the, the things, right? It's also challenging, but it's very interesting also. If you are getting such a system, that is very interesting also, right? And uh, then uh, that's why the object, object detection methods are also very significant. Uh, somebody may be familiar with these old types, right? Faster RCNN region based with CNN models, then uh, your models are also very familiar. 
And uh, again, the third generation neural network based the model is just like attention networks, then uh, visual transformers, similar kind of things are also very much used. I have done a literature survey recently, and what I have found is many areas are there. I have introduced only few areas related to this uh, robotic surgery. Uh, many more areas are also there. Recent works, a lot of recent works are coming based on the uh, third generation deep uh, learning models. Uh, there the basic problem is the availability of data is and uh, you know for ease whatever I have explained here different different applications and uh, these are working in different uh, perspectives. Right? So corresponding database is the pilot required. So that's why that, that problem is still there. But uh, you know that uh, it's that's why I'm telling this is not a saturated uh, area. We have got the scope to improve, right? You can do a lot of things. So that's why, uh, anyway, you know that this is an emerging area. If you are looking at the conventional medical image processing, uh, definitely you know that a lot of things are getting saturated and you cannot contribute more in that. But this is somewhat, after my understanding, it's an emerging area so that uh, we would have scope for that. But we need to be careful and you know that our contribution should be sound. And another thing is generating models that means GAN based system or the uh, various normal code basis models are also used to generate new images and video with high quality so that uh, our training needs data business can be improved, image synthesis videos, that kind of things we can provide so that the training mechanism as well as you know that uh, the accuracy of the training model can be improved. So these are some of the uh, methodologies uh, in uh, computer vision where current means the recent development. Uh, then uh, these are some of the challenging uh, means to the uh, uh, means areas, surgical face recognition already we discussed uh, as in the kind of thing. The serial detection endoscopy, surgical technical skill assessment already we discussed, anatomy detection, uh, then surgical instrument detection, I already told you that. Then the navigation in the body surgery, how to navigate it, right? navigation that is also very important, image fusion and image guided surgery. Sometimes multiple, uh, you know, that uh, cameras may be there, as well as, you know, that uh, camera modalities may be also different uh, there. In that situation, image fusion, so that the previous class I was telling that uh, pet image and uh, mother image are fused together so that the important, uh, you know, uh, information are combined together so that the accuracy can be improved, right? Otherwise, we need to deal with the separate image modality. Some kind of uh, things are also coming. Then uh, here I am showing uh, some of the publicly available database for such cases. Uh, uh, so uh, this uh, uh, four databases we have found and uh, it's really available. You can uh, but the size is very large generally. It is uh, in GBs. Uh, but for most of the application, we may be used. We can use that. So while you are choosing one particular problem, definitely you need to look at the availability of database. If it is labeled database, it's good, right? Uh, so then showing some of the uh, means uh, uh, publicly available database in this particular field. Then one of the different challenges I already told you that technical concept and educational consideration we need to give, you know, medical field uh, ethical issues are very significant, right? And personal data, privacy, everything is coming there. So generally you know that uh, if you are opposing candidate medical college, they are not very much, so, you know, uh, after signing their points and not even they are providing the different data, otherwise they will not give. So that is because personal information and everything. So that's why this uh, uh, means the second statement is whether the patient have right to control and oversee the usage of their personal data or not. That's also a very important thing, right? Then, uh, so uh, then the quality of the database, I already told you that quality as well as quality also, right? One, one training model is working well when the different uh, challenging scenarios are to be included in the training process, right? The database should be passed as well. So lack of database means definitely, you know, all the variations may not be available in our database. That is going to affect the uh, uh, accuracy of the system. So that kind of things are also coming there. Yeah.
then uh, then data quality uh, then i already told you the concept of occlusion right occlusion in the sense you know that when you capture the data you know most of the our internal organs are you know it's not in a straight line fashion somewhere you know and the muscle coming out of things are over that way so uh, then means something may be hidden about means below some other organs or something so also the situation we need to get the complete picture about the organ or something like that so that is said to be occlusion and uh, so from this occlusion itself we need to get some prediction right so that's a, that's a, that's the concept that's why generally people are doing means multiple angle cameras and uh, means uh, cameras with the different angles and uh, comparing these together that is using uh, image fusion techniques are adopted so that uh, you know that uh, somewhat better clarity again the 3d visualization is also possible and somewhat you know additional sensors or algorithmic approaches algorithmic approaches means you know that mathematical concepts are used to uh, reconstruct the things and the annotation protocols that means uh, it's an extensive annotated training is necessary to ensure temporal and spatial annotations you know this video that means uh, the whole annotations are only not only spatial and time variations that also need to tell and uh, so uh, we expect that training is also required that's also a challenging thing then uh, uh, bias and transparency of medical data uh, this includes details about how the data was collected what bias it may contain and who owns the rights to data and the kind of things are also very much important I already told that this is medical data not the conventional data that's why this whole uh, ownership everything is very much important also right I'm going to conclude here just you know what I'm trying to tell is uh, this is an emerging area uh, it's not saturated also as in my understanding we will have a lot of scopes to improve but you know while we are dealing that one what we need to do is we need to first of all check the availability of database uh, and a similar kind of thing whether we may be able to uh, proceed further otherwise we may be halfway right and also we can definitely utilize the third generation deep learning models in these all cases so that you know that uh, we can uh, have fruitful results right so these are the major reference which i have used to prepare these slides and i have ordered all the real uh, images because you know that medical images in the other part of the human body will be somewhat disturbing for many of us right that's why i have taken the simulated you know that simulation is here otherwise you know that many people don't want to see such type of images right so <laughs> So, uh, I mean, so basically, if you are looking at this uh, reference papers itself, everything is really the images they have included. But uh, uh, when I prepared the slide, I was a little bit worried about this thing whether it may be, you know, publicly. Uh, if we are working in that area, so okay, after some time, we may be happy with that technology. But uh, the later time, you know, next for a new person, new new people, it will be different. So these all the reference papers are very really recent papers only. Uh, so that's why I'm telling them it's not saturated because it's half stone. If you have any further questions, then you can ask because I am also new to this field. I'm not a very good expert in this area. So uh, if uh, if you have some queries, you can ask for that to my uh, limit I can answer. So how much of uh, this control navigation that I As per my understanding, you know that uh, some remote means you know that we means the some the master person is part of the control. Right? And, and you know, if you want to navigate something, ah. towards an object, yeah. So you need to apply your the electric field to disperse that you know, yeah. control. Yeah. Yes, yes. Once a trained model is available, it can automatically run. That's mentioned in the paper yes, but you know that that should be perfect means perfect in nature. So is there any research focus? Yeah, it's there a lot of papers are now available. But I have it. I have seen some few papers recently.
organization. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, you went through the whole process. Yeah, so that's right. Like how to go on any technical thing to start. Exactly, and I think for the audience as Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. what these yeah. methods are. still works at the Yeah, I, I mean, I think for the audience, that's the best, you know, to go through the whole analysis. I also, I also believe that that's the thing. If you're there, I also don't know. I'm open to work with my product manager for like right? we just started the issue for like two months back. So we have the traces of that, and that's something we really have to say. Because one uh, just comment. And, uh, I think it's very important and it's uh, still completely unexplored or very little explored field, the computer vision robotics or yeah. robotics and navigation in yeah. general. Even all the things I presented, they're all in research stage. Nothing is yeah. out yeah. 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 So it, it's all in research stage. So my question is, is what we see is that we need a lot of equipment for that, like robotic arm and uh, actuators and all of those things. And, uh, uh, packing systems and so on. These are quite expensive. Uh, what do you comment on that, like having a lab for that, right? Because you need a lab with uh, those equipments. In, in our case, we are not in a position to get such a lab at all because that the installation and the tools to cost in time. So it's not possible for a, uh, for needs in our situation, it's not possible. Our computer systems are limited in this. So at this time, available there is some database and everything is available. We can put the simulation part and process. That. That's why I, I was telling you know, that uh, we, first of all, we need to look at the availability of the database and uh, we cannot explain when we do this one also because that's not possible. Yeah, I mean, that's why because, uh, I think funding should be applied for to Data is actually very important. Yes. But one thing is that what I've seen as well is like you yes. ask clinicians, they have got a lot of data. Uh, they are reluctant, right? Because there's a lot of work to be done. Yes, it's a lot of data. For them, it's, it's a, uh, you know, that grouping and everything is called that it's data. Exactly. So they don't want that. Yeah, exactly. So my comment would be that it's good to approach the clinicians that, okay, give me just very little images. Right, then I can work on weekly supervised uh, methods or something. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, or unsupervised or whatever. Right, uh, and then give an initial result which yes. might not be perfect. Yes. But they can utilize that for making annotations in a faster yes. way. We have found that we give uh, starting from nothing and giving some output, oh. output it, it reduces the time for radiologists a lot yes. in creating the annotations. Yes. That would give an incentive for the clinicians to do it. Yes. Like, otherwise they think that uh, they have a lot of work that they have to do. And then the project is dead at the beginning yes. itself, right? Yes. And also a research point of view as well, because if you get 200 or 300 images, yeah, you can just apply the learning and maybe get a good result. But then what is the research then, right? The networks are already there, yes. right? So the question is also look at, uh, on a research side, the image processing part of it, combining traditional with the deep learning, what are the research questions that you can do even with less data? What yes, yes. I mean, I think it's a general thing we should uh, yeah, yeah. say. That's what we are looking for. Uh, with the minimum data, how we will get a maximum, you know, we cannot trust on the conventional available algorithm, we need to do something. I mean, it's not completely deviation, it's changing the algorithm. Somehow, we can have the intention to be able to do something that is also, that's the our plan. So, what we are trying to do that. And what you suggested is very important for you know that uh, we, we should not ask for annotated or fair from the hospitals. If you are able to do some, you know, that annotation from our side, there is a significant part of the previous lecture, the server saying, you know, that uh, we should have some idea about the, you know, the medical side also, right? So those are planning to do the research, they should first of all, you know, should go through the fundamentals. Uh, they can 
little bit otherwise they will not get the clarity. Likely we are doing something and giving the results and it's in a half year. Should be a given thing. Yes, sister. They should understand that. Yes, sister. Thank you very much. Thank you.